Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Transformers at Simply Learn. Do you know friends that Transformers have revolutionized the natural language processing and deep learning tasks by offering a more efficient way to handle range of dependencies in data sequences. Unlike traditional models like recurrent neural networks which processes input sequentially, Transformers process the entire sequences simultaneously. Well, in this tutorial, we will dive into the architecture of Transformers, breaking down the key concepts like self-attention, multi-head attention, and the roles of encoder and decoder. By the end of this tutorial, guys, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how Transformers work and why they are the foundation of modern NLP models like BERT and ChatGPT. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. So, guys, before we move on, just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got postgraduate program in AI and machine learning. It is a rank one AI and ML course. You can boost your career with this AI and ML course, which is delivered in collaboration with Purdue University and IBM. You will learn in-demand skills such as machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, and many more. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So guys, let's get started. So guys, let us start by understanding what are exactly transformers. So guys, basically transformers are a groundbreaking innovation in natural language processing. They were basically introduced to make it easier to handle long range dependencies in sequences like sentences or paragraphs. Unlike the older models such as recurrent neural networks and conventional neural networks which processes the input sequentially, Transformers uses a mechanism called self-attention to analyze the entire input at once. This shift allows them to handle large amounts of data more efficiently and understand relationships between distant words in a sequence pattern. Now, you would be wondering why would we needing the transformers? So guys, before transformers, models struggled with long sentences or sequences. Traditional models like RNNs processed words one after another, which made them slow and often forgetful when dealing with longer context. While attention mechanisms improved these models by allowing them to focus on specific words, there was still a room for improvement. Transformers solve this problem by completely relying on attention, specifically self-attention and dropping the sequential processing using RNN. This makes transformers faster and more accurate for tasks like language translation, text summarization and many more. We are going to discuss about these mechanisms like attention mechanism and self-attention mechanism, but I hope so you have got some brief idea regarding why transformers were exactly needed. Now let us understand some of the core concepts before understanding the transformers. So guys, the first one is, what is attention? Imagine you are reading a long sentence to understand it fully. You don't read it word by word in isolation. You relate the words to each other to make sense of sentence as a whole. Attention helps the model to do this by focusing on most important words in the input sequence when generating the output. For example, guys, if you are translating the sentence, I see the red house into French, the model needs to focus on the word house to translate it into the machine. Attention ensures that the model gives importance to the right word at the right time. Now, what is self-attention, guys? Self-attention takes this idea way more further. Instead of just focusing on the relationship between input and the output sequences, it focuses on the relationship within the input sequence itself. This is useful because in many sentences, words are related to each other in complex ways. Consider this sentence. I poured water from the bottle into the cup until it was full. Here, it refers to the cup. Now, look at the next sentence. I poured water from the bottle into the cup until the cup was empty. So in this case, it refers to the bottle. So self-attention helps the model understand these subtle differences by looking at the whole sentences and identifying the relationship between the words. Now, let us move ahead and try to understand the three types of attentions in transformers. The first one that we have all over here is encoder-decoder attention. This attention focuses on relationship between input, which is the English sentence, and the output, which is a translated French sentence. It helps the model align with the input and the output, making translation more accurate. Next one we have all over here is self-attention on input sequence. 
This attends to all the words in the input sequence and helps the model understand the context of each word in relation to others in the same sentence. Now self attention on the output sequence. So guys in this scenario while generating the output like translating a sentence the model uses this attention to look at the words it has already predicted and prevent it from looking at the future words. This is done using masking when only certain words are visible at each step of the process. Now let us try to understand queries, keys and value which is the heart of self attention. So guys in this diagram it illustrates the self attention in the context of transformer architecture and how queries, keys and values interact with the softmax function to calculate the output. So as you can see in this diagram, it illustrates the self attention in context of transformer architecture and how queries, keys and values interact with the softmax function to calculate the output. Now let us break down this diagram. So you can see query all over here. Okay, 0, 1, 2. Uh, this orange column labeled as Q contains the value that represents query vector for each word taken in the input sequence. Each row corresponds to a word or token and its full value represents how much focus should be placed on that particular word when calculating self attention. Next one we have all over here is key. The yellow column labeled K contains values representing the key vector. Keys are used to determine which words in the input sequence the correct query should attend to. The dot product of the query and keys value is calculated which is shown by the multiplication dot between Q and K. Next we have the softmax function. The result of the dot product between query and key is passed through a softmax function which is basically a gray column to convert these values into probabilities. Softmax takes the result of dot product and ensures that they sum up to 1 making them probabilities that indicate how much attention each word should receive. The fourth one is value. The blue column labeled V represents the value vectors which holds actual information in the input sequence that needs to be weighted based on the attention scores. After applying the softmax weights to the value vectors, the model focuses on the relevant parts of the input. And finally, we have the output. The final green column labeled output is a result of multiplying the softmax scores, which are the attention weights, by the value vectors V. The softmax distribution ensures that more important words, those with higher weights, contribute more to the output while less relevant words contribute less. As shown in the diagram, some values in the output are larger or highlighted as bigger value while others are smaller indicating their relative importance to the sentence. Now you would be wondering what exactly is a softmax function? The softmax function is a mathematical operation which is used to convert a set of raw scores like the result of dot products between queries and keys into probabilities. So for example, here you have the input. So the raw scores in this case from the dot product of the queries and keys vector. Then you have the exponentiation. The softmax function exponentiates each score, okay, making sure all the values are positive. And finally you have the normalization where it normalizes these value by dividing each exponentiated value by the sum of all exponentiated value. This ensures that all the values add up to 1, making them valid probabilities. So guys, you can see the softmax formula all over here. So attention, query, keys and values equals to softmax q k to the power t under root k of k denominator and v. So this is a general formula for calculating the attention. Now let us move ahead and try to understand the multi-head attention which enhances the power of self-attention. So guys in transformers multi-head attention allows the model to perform self-attention several times in parallel. Each attention heads looks at the different parts of the sentence sequence okay and by doing this the model can capture multiple types of relationships at the same time. So the benefit Instead of relying on just one set of queries, keys and values, the model has multiple sets or heads and each head processes the input side differently and then the outputs from all the heads are combined and processed further. This gives the model a much richer understanding of the sequence. Now let us try to understand the transformer architecture. So first one we have the encoder stack. Okay. So guys, as you can see in this diagram, this is the encoder stack. The encoder takes the input sequence, suppose a sentence in English and creates the representation. Let's call it as Z. That summarizes all the important information about the sequence. The encoder is made up of two components, the multi-head self-attention. This looks at the input sequence and finds a relationship between words using self-attention. Then you have the feed-forward network. This processes the output from the self-attention mechanism to further refine the information. Next, you have the encoder. 
The encoder doesn't change the length of the input sequence. It just transforms it into the input into a format that decoder can work with. Next, we have the decoder stack. The decoder takes a representation from the encoder and uses it to generate the output sequence. Means the translated sentences in French. Each decoder has three main components. The masked multi-hit self-attention, which ensures the model can only look at words it has already predicted, preventing it from cheating by looking ahead. Then you have the encoder decoder attention. This attends the encoder's output to help decoder focus on the relevant parts of the input sequence. And then you have the feed forward network, which further processes the output of the attention layers to refine the predictions. Both encoder and decoder are repeated multiple times in a stack, often six layers, to improve the model's ability to understand and generate complex sequences. Now, finally, we have the positional encoding, which adds the order to the sequence. Transformers processes the input sequence all at once, not word by word, so they need a way to understand the order of the words in which the sentence, since word order matters in most languages. They do this by adding a special positioning encoding vector to each word in the sequence. This encoding tells the model where each word appears in the sentence. The positional encoding uses sine and cosine functions to generate these position-specific vectors which are added to the word embeddings, the numerical representation of each word. And in this way, the transformer knows where each word is, even though it's processing the sequence in parallel. So guys, this architecture makes transformer fast, efficient, and reliable, and powerful for the tasks like translation, text generation, summarization, and many others. They found the backbone of the advanced models like BERT, GPT, and T5 which are used widely in NLP today. So guys, that was all for today's session. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's session on Transformers. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.